One of the things that struck me when I got a chance to talk to you last week, and I thought it was incredibly insightful, like most of the things you say, but I was also a young general counsel at a small company, very stressed out. I had been a healthcare litigator. I didn't have the same transactional background as you. And, you know, they look, a lot of times they look at that law department, especially if you're wearing these multiple hats, like you've done so capably over the years and you're the no department or right. the like the, the most risk averse. And I thought you said some really insightful things about that when we were talking. I was just going to ask you if you might reflect on that for us now, because um, these young students going into these smaller companies or startups are going to, um, you know, sort of face these stereotypes and have to navigate what you've done so capably over the years. I to totally agree. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll, I'm going to start you off with a story that kind of starts in actually in litigation because I was a litigator, but it starts in litigation. So when I first uh, was working in private practice in New Jersey, there's this mandatory pro bono work. And when you're a young associate, usually everybody's pro bono work filters down to you. So I had a client who was, uh, you know, accused of, I, I guess, uh, having possession of alcohol or drugs or something like that. And we're in municipal court. But for me, it was the most important thing in the world. And I, you know, John Weffing was the criminal uh, procedure, criminal law teacher at Seton Hall when I was there. And I absolutely, although I didn't want to go in litigation or in law enforcement, I loved his classes. So I remember writing a brief about, you know, motion to suppress. And, and I, you know, I'd go up there and I, I, you know, send it in and I go the day of court and I talk to the prosecutor and he's like, hey, kid, we can either argue your motion or I can give you a conditional discharge. If you argue your motion, you lose, she's going to jail. If you give the conditional discharge, she pays on a plan and she leaves today. I, all of a sudden, it's like, wow, the theory of what I learned in law school and the motion suppress and this was the most important thing, whatever, was like, but if I'm wrong and she goes to jail, I'm going to have to live with that. She's going to have to live with that. So that got me to thinking like, okay, sometimes you want to do the best you can in terms of understanding the regulations and understanding the law and advocating for your client. But sometimes you have to make you know, decisions that are going to be more practical, I guess, than just the black letter law. So that was the first kind of opportunity. The second opportunity, I was at a job interview for one of the health systems I worked at. And the CFO was about as big as I am, about six foot five. And he kind of leans over in the interview and he goes, you're not going to be one of those no lawyers, are you? And I'm thinking, okay, so this is a key part of the job interview process. However, I answer this question is going to depend upon whether I continue on in the job uh, process or I get it bounced out. And I said, I kind of looked at him and I kind of stood, kind of stood straight up in my chair. Cause like I said, I think he was used to intimidating people by being so big. And I kind of looked him out in his eyes and I said, no, I'm a person who gets things done, but I'm going to get it done the right way. So my goal is to understand what your goals are and try and marry the, the hurdles and the compliance, uh, you know, the, the risk along the way with the practicality of getting something done and hopefully figuring out something that meets your goal. So my thought is I want to be a doer and get things done in a compliant way and not be a no. And my commitment to you is if you feel like I'm being a no, then at least let's have a conversation because often what happens is they start to bypass the lawyer because they go, oh, he's not going to agree to that. It's like, why don't we have the conversation first? Allow me to understand the different dimensions of your thought process in terms of how you want to solve a problem from a business perspective before you just make the assumption that as a lawyer, I'll never go for that. And I'm not to say that I take undue risk. I have to factor in the risk, you know, the risk benefit analysis for every decision I do. But my thought is if I better understand what you're thinking and then I can better explain why the law is set up a certain way that we probably can collaborate together and, you know, make a, make a conclusion that, that gets us both where we want to be compliant, but successful for the, for the business. So those are things as a young attorney, you know, it's not easy. If you haven't had a lot of experience in terms of doing internships, you haven't initially had a clerkship or worked, you know, for a law firm yet, you only really know the black letter law. So, you know, I think the thought is the faster you can better understand that law is a piece and a very important piece of the decision making process every day. But in a business sense, it can't be it can't be the leader because otherwise there may be no business and it can't be the last thing in because then it may be too late. But you have to be a collaborator, not somebody who just says, I'm sorry, in law school or in the you know, X versus Y case, it's, you can't do that. It's like, no, let's look beyond that. There's got to be another way. And maybe it's compromise on both sides. So those are some of the kind of life examples that I've used that I hope others can learn from. And the thought is, you know, we do a lot of great things in law school, but it does, it does help to have a little experience to understand. So you're not sweating it out like, oh, God, if I say no, am I going to lose my job? You know, that's not great. But if I do my best to try and collaborate and understand what's going on, more often than not, we usually find a solution that gets us where we need to be as a business.